<sighs> well, it's not as hot. Sun's going down. Easier time to ride. But it's still 107 degrees, 106 every day. That hasn't really changed. What's up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? Today, I'm hoping I got a final quote on fixing my AC in the studio so I can have hopefully get the guy out. I think he's coming in the next couple of days, I think three days from now. Probably by the time you see this, I. If I'm playing comfortably, the AC got fixed. If I'm not playing comfortably, then it's still not fixed. I really can't wait for fall. I like wearing leather and riding during fall, especially if it's just cold enough that I can throw a hoodie on underneath. That's, that's my perfect, like that's the zone I wanna be in. I've got some friends up in Pennsylvania I thought about visiting and taking a ride. Only problem I have is I would want to take more stuff with me and currently I ride this thing naked so I would need a sissy bar or saddleback. So I'm torn between the two. I tend to be a sissy bar kind of guy. But I'm not opposed to saddlebags, because I mean, get some throwovers, put them over. I guess I gotta look up pricing on some saddlebag brackets, how much they cost versus how much a, a sissy bar would cost. And maybe do that. There's also a large possibility that I'll be flying out to another state for some work. And uh, if that happens, I'm debating trying to find a bike rental place out there. And I know there's an app you can rent motorcycles from, I just don't remember the name of it. But maybe looking for that, seeing if I can find another BMW or an Indian. Just something different. I think it'd be fun to ride something different. And that way I can maybe get a really good A and B of this bike versus that bike. I guess it also depends on the weather out where I'm riding to or where I'm flying to. It depends on the weather of where I'm flying to, how it is out there. Hopefully it's cooler than here. But they haven't really given me any updates on when or... They just said it'd be like two weeks. And here pretty soon. Potentially. We'll see. I saw in the news something about four lockdowns, starting with TSA and flying. So, I guess we'll definitely see. So, just as an update, when I recorded all the musical parts for the last video, I did it in the studio when it was probably about 98 degrees and I didn't use my orange dark uh, dual dark because it was already hot 
I didn't want to get hotter, so I used my uh, orange dark terror. It's like the dark version of a tiny terror. The small 15 watt. I have mine modded to get up to 25 watts. If, if I push it kind of hot, I can get up to 33 with some headroom. It's not bad. But, uh, yeah, I played that for that specifically because I was hoping I wasn't running. The room is hot and it kind of dissipates heat a little better than the big head. But I didn't really realize it until I got home that that really drained the hell out of me. I was so exhausted from working in the studio. And I was in there for a couple of hours. But man, it really just goes to show drink your water. I do a carnivore diet. So I pretty much drink coffee, water, and then eat a bunch of protein. And that's about it. But yeah, you really need to drink your water. Because that day, I did not drink enough water. And I was feeling it. I'm still kind of feeling it. Now, and I'm riding right now, and all I've had today is coffee. I need to have some water. It's on my list. So yeah, guys. If it's hot as hell where you are, or at least equivalent to as hot as it is here in Texas during this Texas summer, remember to keep drinking water. I was never a big advocate of drinking water before either. That only happened the past five years or so. Once I kind of started reading about keto and low carb and zero carb carnivore, I kind of started looking at water and electrolytes, seeing how important that was. And now that's, I watch what I drink and I watch what I eat. And I do, I do eat carbs. I do eat regular food, pizza, etc. I just do it sparingly and I do it in intervals after I've been doing keto. And honestly, I do keto and I feel great every day. After carbs, I feel a little heavy, a little sluggish. Uh, my brain, I can't think as straight or as clearly. I don't know what it is about my beard hair is flying up, but they keep tickling my nose probably need to get them trimmed down but I've been really trying to grow out my beard I've got a wedding coming up that I'm going to and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with my hair and my beard that's been kind of my main priority so I've been letting them loose a little bit so that way they'll have enough length for me to actually work on like trimming it down you can always go down you can't grow it out really fast last minute Oh, I don't miss a gear very often, so that was interesting. I also still need tires. Well, at least a front tire for, for this. The problem is, I was looking online and they're still all out of stock. I'm going to check again in a day or two, but even when I order it, it'll still take like two days to come in. Now I'm not doing any heavy riding, I'm mainly just kind of commuting back and forth, and then light errands that I got to do where I don't have to pick up anything or carry anything necessarily. That's kind of what I'm doing on the bike lately. But yeah, it's pretty crazy how there's no tires anywhere, I don't know why. I need to like look in the news and see if there's a strike at the tire factory or something because I just don't know why you can't find them even the dealer the dealer still doesn't have them man I'm about to ride past this lake and it's hot even though the sun's kind of blocked that lake looks pretty refreshing already I thought about getting a boat, but everybody tells me the best and worst day of your life is when you get a boat. 
because now you have a boat. It's not something to use all the time. You got to store it somewhere. It also costs maintenance. But the, the thing is, I really want a sailboat. When I was a teen, I used to sail and for a short while I was a sailing instructor. And I kind of miss it. I think it'd be kind of fun to go out and do some sailing just like, if I had like a weekend. And maybe a, not like a large boat like I could sleep on. Well, maybe, I don't know. That'd be kind of cool if I could sleep on a boat. But maybe large enough where I could do like little trips to certain lakes and maybe around Texas. There's certain lakes that they've got bars and restaurants that you can pull your boat up to and then go go eat at or visit. That'd be kind of cool. Ooh, I'm sweating. But it's nowhere near as hot as if it was earlier in the day when the sun was baking. I was outside earlier and man, that was ridiculous. I have some ideas. Wow. Hand signals communicating to a guy trying to turn the wrong way down a, a one way. Never done that before. Crazy. Everybody says the drivers in their city are crazy. I just think everybody thinks it's crazy wherever they live until they go to like a third world country and then they see how everybody just drives and there's no street lights. They just it's almost like John Locke's social contract idea. Somehow they magically don't kill each other, hit each other, but also everybody's driving and riding reasonable, at a reasonable speed at least, when they're really next to each other, just kind of going by each other. It's super reasonable. But it is crazy to me when you see like all these motorcyclists in the far right lane turning left and they just cut across everybody that's still going straight. Like that is nuts. <laughs> Makes me think that they got like toxoplasmosis. Cause they're just risk adverse. They don't care, they just do it. A lot of people think being risk adverse means that you're not adventurous or you're not entrepreneurial or you don't go out and you don't try new things or do things that are you know risky like you're typically think of like you don't go gambling you don't try spicy foods you don't do you know go up on high ledges or something you're afraid of you don't go skydiving Just because you're risk adverse doesn't mean that you're afraid to do things. It just means that you're able to analyze if these things come with the risk that you're not necessarily comfortable with or even capable of in that moment. So you choose not to. So today's dad advice, you don't fail at something until you stop trying. So if you enjoy something that you're doing, don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about if other people are judging if you're having fun or not. It's really just about you. If you're doing something that you personally enjoy and you see it as a goal and you're making these little goals and you're working towards it and there's incremental steps that you're reaching then keep doing it have fun be happy do it and don't worry about little setbacks you might have 
those little setbacks, it's normal. We all go through things when we're learning to do something new or we're trying something. Even when we try things that we're really good at already and we think we're comfortable with doing, we still have little things we can learn, little baby steps. So you're not a failure at something until you stop trying. So don't stop trying. And remember, pull hard, play hard,